The 1975 thriller Jaws was an iconic point in motion picture history. The direction, music score, editing, and cinematography blended wonderfully to create a horror thriller experience for moviegoers. So much so that water phobia and shark phobia reports increased dramatically after the film's release. The portrayal of sharks in the movie Jaws led to many shark-killing contests in later years, and experts suggest that the movie directly led to a decline in the shark population around the world. Jaws was also a landmark picture for its director, Steven Spielberg, whose claim to fame before the movie was the modestly successful The Sugarland Express. Jaws's widespread success brought Spielberg into the limelight. Even the rest of the cast, including Roy Scheider, Richard Dreyfuss, and Lorraine Gary, shot to fame overnight with the film's phenomenal success. The budget for Jaws was $12 million, and the film went on to gross a whopping $470.7 million in the worldwide box office. As the first motion picture to be shot largely at sea, it overshot its budget and shooting schedule by a large margin. Still, it wasn't a big-budget film compared to today's standards. Jaws opened in 465 theaters, which was a big feat back then, when movies typically played in a location for a few months before moving to other cities and eventually smaller towns. In this video, we're going to take a look at some facts you might not know about this legendary movie. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video to learn about the movie's original ending, which was changed last minute. Facts First presents 16 Jaws Facts That Made Movie History. Before we get started, click the like button if you've seen the original Jaws movie. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Jaws is as much John Williams' movie as it is Steven Spielberg's. Jaws' theme is as iconic as the movie. In fact, the motif has since become synonymous with sharks. Steven Spielberg and John Williams had worked together on Spielberg's first film, The Sugarland Express, and they teamed up again for Jaws. Interestingly, the simple two-note theme failed to impress Spielberg when he first heard it, and he reportedly laughed and said, that's funny, John, really, but what did you really have in mind for the theme of Jaws? Fortunately, Spielberg was ultimately convinced. The theme is integral to the movie. The shark's presence and an ominous sense of foreboding were essentially created with the background score. John Williams eventually won the Academy Award for Best Original Music Score and Golden Globe Award for Best Original Score and the BAFTA Award for Best Original Music for Jaws. The first victim, a stunt woman, is attacked when her partner passes out on the beach. The shark's first... To make the scene yet more realistic and have crabs crawling over the arm, the prop master poured hot coffee on them. It seems a tad bit much, but the scene did turn out quite realistic. Brody fears the water, much like Spielberg. Martin Brody, the police chief of the fictional Amity Island and the protagonist of Jaws, has a phobia of water. Spielberg himself admitted to being afraid of the ocean, saying, I'm afraid of the water, and I'm afraid of everything that exists under the water that I can't see. This could be one of the reasons he often depicts the ocean at night when it seems dark and full of mystery. A kid and a dog die, but somehow Jaws is rated PG. Jaws is based on a man-eating great white shark that kills five people. The mechanical sharks were called Bruce on set. Three mechanical sharks subbed in for the man-eater and were collectively known as Bruce on the set, after Spielberg's lawyer, Bruce Rammer. Two were constructed for side shots, left and right, and one was constructed entirely. They cost approximately $150,000 each and were infamous for breaking down and malfunctioning. Apparently, the sharks were tested in non-salt water at Universal Studios, and in the ocean, salt water proved hell for the machinery. Interestingly, George Lucas got stuck in one of the mechanical shark's jaws when he came to visit Spielberg and John Milius in the special effects shop. Lucas decided to stick his head in the jaws, and the others pranked him by closing them. Unfortunately, the controls jammed, and the jaws had to be pried open. Despite Bruce's many flaws, it was essential to Jaws' success. When you consider that Jaws was released back in 1975, Bruce was an engineering marvel. All three mechatronic sharks were made from the same mold and were 25 feet long. The most famous line wasn't in the script. The line, you're gonna need a bigger boat, is as famous as the movie Jaws, if not more. Apparently, it was already a catchphrase on the set. 
The set equipment was kept on a barge supported by a small boat, which was unsuitable for the task, hence the line. Brody, Roy Scheider, utters the line in the scene where he's throwing Chum into the water. Some of his other movies to feature these include Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and The Adventures of Tintin, The Secret of the Unicorn. Brody and Hooper's inappropriate laugh at the end. In the end, Brody and Hooper are seen sharing a laugh at their good fortune after Brody has killed the shark. In the same breath, Hooper learns of Quint's death. While Hooper and Quint are seen arguing in the East, Teaser for the shark's cause of death. Very few climaxes are as satisfying as watching the shark being blown to smithereens at the end of Jaws, thanks to the shark threatening the whole community. Martha's Vineyard was also chosen for the fact that the ocean floor is no deeper than 35 feet below the surface around the island. While the shallow waters were supposed to make things easier for the crew, it was still hell for the divers who had to retrieve one of the sharks after it capsized. Today, Martha's Vineyard is popular as the location where Jaws was shot, and fans continue to flock popular spots from the movie. Quite a few of the locals were used as extras in the movie to play on the beach and run from the water screaming, Shark. Originally, Hooper was supposed to die. Peter Benchley's novel Jaws and Steven Spielberg's movie Jaws had quite a few differences. While the novel has un... Let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to Facts First.